Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Bicycle Touring Talk, episode number 19. Bicycle Touring Talk is based on my book. It's called Destinations Are Fake. And you might want to find out why that is by listening to this channel or perhaps ordering the book through the link in the description. I would appreciate if you did that. My name is George Schlakek and I am the one, the one and only. only. In the last episode, I was talking about crossing the border into Mexico and a little bit about the fear that I had about doing that. Now in this episode, I want to tell you about the real dangers of cycling in Mexico or any foreign country for that matter, especially the less developed. When I was crossing into Mexico, I did not know what to expect. I was scared. And the first interactions I had after crossing the border with people in Matamoros seemed to confirm that that was justified. I had people approach me for money. I didn't trust anyone. Matamoros, I have to tell you, is no different from any other city, except perhaps that it shares a border with the United States. The information that I had was not positive. It was given to me by travel advisories that you find online and some other people that were perhaps influenced by that. You will always, and probably in any major city, no matter where and what country, you will find opportunists who will ask you for money and if given the chance, perhaps they'll rob you. The question is, how dangerous are they really? Most of the time, when you encounter people that are asking you for money, the best policy is to approach them in a polite, firm and confident manner. It is one thing to give someone a couple of bucks it is quite another to let them control any part of your agenda. Don't follow anybody to their house. It should be common sense, but I think it needs to be said here. You are in control. Don't give it to somebody you don't know. Now, I think a more common concern even is about gangs, drug cartels. Well, I have to say that the bad news is that they all exist. But the good news is that you know, they won't bother with you. For example, kidnapping. Do you know how much planning a successful kidnapping would take? It takes more than one person. There's considerable planning and expense involved. So if you're a cycling tourist, you've got two or three panniers full of gear, dirty clothes, maybe a camera, an old laptop. You think it's worth for them to chase after you? I mean, honestly, trust me, they won't. Gangs, it's almost the same thing. They have stuff that they're busy with. They have profitable dealings. They don't need to mess around with a cyclist. Now, there's one kind of criminal that the locals will probably warn you about, and rightly so, because robberies are definitely quite common. These people are after your possessions. They're not out to kill you. So obviously the best thing to do is don't show off your possessions. Don't walk around with an expensive watch. When you're in an area where you know, you're not sure what's going on, maybe don't take that picture. Keep the camera in your pocket or, or in your bag. If you do get robbed, well, give them your money, your camera, whatever they're after, and you won't get harmed. Killing you is a lot of trouble for them. You know, they don't want to do that. So it's best to just give up whatever they're after and you walk out of there in one piece. Now let me talk about the real dangers of cycling in a lesser developed country such as Mexico. It's all about road hazards, traffic, and that's often understated. Most people aren't aware of it and I wasn't either. What you're dealing with, let's say example Mexico, 
A lot of people cannot afford a late model car, but they can afford it. Something that moves quite well, but is perhaps not the safest on the road. There are also more drivers that will drink and drive because enforcement is lacking and you know on top of that any convenience store even gas stations you name it that is alongside major highways they will sell beer some will sell hard liquor and there's always somebody who will think that's okay even if you see those billboards uh, don't drink and drive you'll see them in spanish but the enforcement is lacking you always have to keep that in mind, you know, who you're sharing the road with. The police in Mexico, they are not the best paid. So a lot of them will accept tips. That's a problem. Personally, I know someone who used to drive an old pickup truck with expired Florida plates in the Cancun area, and it wasn't legal. But his policy was to always have the equivalent of about $20 US in the car in case he had to bribe somebody. I'm telling you this because that's a good example of how Mexican law enforcement often works. Not trying to pick on Mexico here, but I've seen this. Now there are also advantages, even if traffic is increasing, in a lesser developed country because there are still a lot of people who do not travel by car and often their transportation of choice is a bicycle. Besides bicycles you will also see horse-drawn carriages all that kind of thing. So drivers expect bicycles on the road you're never quite by yourself they are used to this, you know, so they, uh, they are perhaps a bit more careful than they would be in North America where there's six lane highways and everybody's expecting to get to their place ASAP. Another thing that I need to talk about that I've seen is the transportation of freight versus people. I found that often I noticed that in uh, lesser developed countries People are transported on trucks just like the freight is. I've seen old pickup trucks in poor shape. The box packed full of people. They're all standing up holding on to some kind of rack. That's what they do. I've seen buses with people riding up on top. Even worse, trucks that are transporting large quantities of hay, corn, sugarcane, you name it. And it's not uncommon for people to ride along with the freight up on top. Safety is not the main concern here. It's getting the stuff moved and a lot of times the freight is treated more carefully than the people. Let that sink in. What is your life worth to somebody who will haul 14 people on an old pickup truck? Just saying. There's more. See, in a lot of places in Mexico and in other countries, people have dogs. They are not trained and they are not well behaved. They are, though, uh, good at perhaps protecting their property. When you pass somebody's place on your bicycle, it's almost a sure thing that a dog will chase you. I've had a horrible experience with that in Mexico on my way to Merida there were five dogs chasing me see I'm passing this little village there's only like three four houses and I see this lady in her yard hanging up laundry a split second later I see five dogs they're all fat little buggers but they're fast and they're running after me what to do well I decided I'm going to ignore these bastards. I'm going to keep my eyes on the road so that I do not lose control of my bike because there was basically no shoulder on the road and any additional traffic would have been really, really dangerous for me. That worked, but the dogs kept running after me. Most of the time, the dogs will not be successful at plowing you down or even landing a bite. But in this case, the dogs just kept going and kept going. Finally, after what had to be a kilometer or so, the first one turned around. And, you know, they always deal in packs. The first one's the leader, so 
One by one, the other ones turned around to go back home. Awesome, I thought. I'm safe now. Started to get my bearings. Then I see this big, huge truck coming the opposite direction. So, like, he's going fast. And I'm wondering, yeah, what's up with those dogs? Turn around and, well, they're still on the road. Then the truck passes me and a split second later, well, I see squish, squish. The truck ran right over one of those dogs. I'm telling you, this was the most awful scene I can remember of this entire bicycle touring that I've done. Now there are four dogs going back to the scene of the collision. You can see that these dogs know exactly what had happened and the sounds they let out, let me tell you, it sank my heart. It spoiled my day, it, it was horrible. I don't wish this on anyone and of course I, I don't want people's dogs to get run over. Was I at fault for that? I don't think so, but I felt bad. Now, there's one thing that uh, I'd like to talk about in Mexico where these things will probably never happen. There are toll roads that are much like the interstate highways in the US or the major Trans-Canada highways in Canada. Four lanes for cars, they have a wide shoulder. Only problem is that uh, with a bicycle, it's off limits. You're not allowed there. And I think I mentioned in my video, in my chapter about sharing the roads, sometimes it can be safer for you to break the law than it is to be 100% compliant. And toll roads are one of these things. In Mexico, the police will actually turn a blind eye if you do that. You know, if you have the choice between a heavily traveled two-lane highway with no shoulder and this toll road, for your own safety, sometimes the, the toll road is the way to go. However, don't blame me if something happens on them because I also have a story about a close call on one of them. I was traveling on one of these expressways on the shoulder and it was hardly any traffic at all. I, I felt totally safe. Then I hear this semi approaching from behind me. Finally it passes me and still everything's fine. As I'm just about to see the rear bumper, kaboom! It was shocking. It was loud. It was like I felt the debris hit my bike and a wave of pressure like you wouldn't believe. The rear tire on that semi-trailer had blown out the outside one. It was a miracle that I wasn't hit or affected. The whole shoulder was full of debris and I was shaken. I, I was like, holy shit, you know. These things you have to be aware of. You have to be prepared for. At this point, awareness is the only defense you have. There are some accidents that just happen. Contrary to popular belief, not all accidents are preventable, but most of them are. And the way you do that is by being aware of your surroundings and acting accordingly. In the cities, usually, your risk is greatest. Sometimes where it's super busy, it might be best to get off your bike and push for a little bit. It's better than getting killed, better to lose time. Remember, you're on the bike tour, you're not in the hurry, you're not part of this big mess that everybody else is participating in. In the long run, there needs to be more infrastructure for cyclists. And of course, when you think of third world countries, you know, they could barely keep the roads together. You think they're gonna invest money in cycling? Well, I think there's hope because there are more people still relying on bicycles for their transportation. And the trend in countries that already have way too many cars like the US or Canada, now we're starting to realize that and the trend is perhaps going a bit in the other direction. At least that's my hope. I have seen a bike lane in Sonsonate El Salvador. This was uh, on another tour. I seen a designated bike lane there. There are bike lanes in Colombia. 
people realize that there is a need and as cyclists I think we have to start to get more organized together and make our voices heard. We need bike infrastructure, bike paths that are apart from the major highways. Sharing the road with vehicles that are 10 times heavier than a bike and probably 100 times more powerful makes no sense. Why put our butts out there? Well, right now we don't have a choice. But you know how much money has been invested over the years into highways, bike paths and bike lanes by comparison are dirt cheap. They could even be dirt covered. I mean, uh, there's all kinds of gravel that are good for cycling as long as they're not big rocks like that. So let me summarize this here. Your real danger as a cyclist is not crime. You are not the most worthy target. You are some kind of oddballs. Criminals generally won't bother with you. The risk you face out there as a cyclist is in sharing the road with cars and I cannot emphasize that enough. Now that I said that, I'm going to tell you about my next episode and yes, it's going to be about my journey. Once again, I'm going to tell you how the journey in Mexico went on, how I went into the state of Veracruz and what happened there. And I hope you join me for that. In the meantime, watch some of the videos on the screen right now. I'll see you next time.